Hello, welcome back to another recipe. So today I'm going to be making a really dish, a delicious, simple Thai green curry. I would normally say welcome back to my kitchen, but I'm in a temporary kitchen at the moment. I'm at home with my parents. So yeah, do excuse the mess that you might see. So yeah, so we're just going to start by slicing some brown onion, really thin, because these are going to be browned in a pan. So I'm going to add the onion to the pot with a little bit of olive oil and when I say a little just give it a good glug. Just add those onions in and our next step will be to chop some green beans. This is a clean board by the way, it's just stained and my green beans look a little sad even though they were bought just yesterday. But what we're going to do, we're just going to start by cutting the stems off. Just line them up, roughly chop them up, and then we're just going to chop them in half. Just roughly chop. It doesn't have to be perfect, just chop them in half. I've boiled some water and I'm just going to add the green beans gently and blanch them for a couple of minutes until they turn a really vibrant green. When they look a really nice vibrant green, you're going to plunge them straight into really cold or even ice water. So the cold water just stops the uh, cooking process and you'll end up with really nice vibrant green beans. And I'm just going to boil some eggs for 10 minutes. I'm not too bothered about changing the water, the beans were just blanched in here. So yeah, just 10 minutes. Next we're going to place the onions on medium heat with a pinch of salt. This just helps them brown without becoming too crunchy. It just helps them soften a little bit. This may not be the most authentic recipe. In fact, I wouldn't think of it so much as a Thai bean curry. It's what we would call kulsa in our family. I think it's meant to be an Indonesian slash Indian dish, but to me it tastes pretty much like a Thai bean curry. So along with the, cube, uh, the onion, we're going to add a couple of teaspoons of cumin seeds and we're going to let that fry for a moment until it's really aromatic. This will help release the flavours and just let that fry in for a moment. So along with the onions and cumin we're going to add some ginger. You can use fresh, I'm just using frozen. And along with the ginger some finely minced garlic and just mix that in and give it another minute just to make sure the rawness is cooked out. And you can see here the onion is really nice and soft. It's caramelised but without being too dark. And we're going to add some really nice handfuls of fresh tomatoes. Mix that in and you're going to keep it on a medium low heat. Preferably with the lid until the tomatoes completely soften and the moisture has evaporated. So the tomatoes have softened and cooked down. It should look like a paste. You can mash it further with the back of your spoon if you want. And we're going to start adding the spices. So I'm going, I've got some chopped green chilli, fresh. Add that in. We're also going to add some red chilli powder. I'm not going to add too much to mine. A hint of turmeric. It may look like the base to an Indian curry actually. Some dried coriander powder. I'm just going to use it what I have. And we're going to add a teaspoon of cumin powder. And we're also going to add some salt and pepper. Because I am going to be adding a little bit of Thai green curry paste. I know it's a bit of a cheat, that's optional. I'm not going to add too much, but you can taste it for seasoning later. And some coarse black pepper. So you're going to mix all those spices in and fry it for an additional minute or until it's really nice and fragrant. Again, this is just to cook off that rawness from the spices. So the spices have been cooked off and I'm going to add a few dollops of uh, Greek yoghurt. Now when you add the yoghurt, mix it really quickly before it curdles. You do not want curdles yoghurt. So mix it into the spices very quickly. Don't let it boil. In fact, I'm going to turn the heat low just whilst to do this in case. So mix it in. Now I'm going to add my chopped and cleaned uh, chicken thigh, which my mum kindly did for me. You can use chicken breast if you want. Just remember you don't want to cook it as much because it will dry out. But I'm just using chicken thigh. 
cut it in all those spices and let it brown for a few minutes. Oh, and turn the heat to medium once you do that. So along to the chicken, of course I have got a very overcrowded pan, but I am limited with what I can use. You can brown your chicken in batches, so it stays really nice and juicy. Ooh! <laughs> so you add your coconut, careful not to spill any like I do. <laughs> So now this is the cheap part. What you're going to do is you're going to give it a good mix, let that coconut fat and milk uh, melt really well into the chicken, um, into the curry, and it should start looking something like this. It will cook down further and deepen, but you can add some Thai green curry paste. If you really don't want to add paste, uh, because I don't have uh, kefir lime leaves, I don't have any lemongrass, I don't have fish sauce, you can just use the Thai green curry paste instead, which will have all of that. And just give it a really good mix into there and add it to your taste. I decided to add an extra can because I wanted a super soupy Thai green curry. And you can see that coconut fat. You're just going to let that melt into there. Stir it in. And remember, you're going to want to taste, taste, taste all the time. You want to make sure it's right for you. If you think it's too strong, add an extra coconut can. If you think it's too mild, add some more spices or that's where the Thai green curry paste comes in handy. I like to add it because I think it just gives it a little edge without having to go out and buy plenty of additional ingredients because it's right here in a handy little bottle. So I did add that paste and I mixed it all in. You can see how delicious that looks and you're going to let this cook. I'm going to let it cook uncovered because I want some of that water to boil off. If you want it to be really soupy, leave it covered. So I've tasted it for seasoning and I decided it needs a little bit of extra salt and pepper. So add that in, make sure you do taste it all the time. And a little extra salt. Okay, so we're near the end of cooking. I'm just going to add some sweet peppers. This is optional, but I do like the colour and the flavour it does give. So just let that sit in there for about two minutes. So when your chicken has cooked and your sauce has thickened, we're going to add the green beans. Let that cook for an extra minute or two. You don't want to let it cook for too long because it will continue to cook in the heat of the sauce. And that's when it'll have that squeaky, squidgy feel. Finally, when the green beans are cooked a little, we're going to add a really good handful of fresh coriander. And you can turn the heat off and let that stand for a few minutes. Just letting it sit before you eat really helps intensify the flavours, it helps the meat relax, it just makes it really good, so make sure you do that. So your Thai green curry should look something like this. You can see how bright and vibrant it looks, and it should taste really, really delicious. Here I'm just boiling some rice, I added some salt, and I'm just doing it simple like that. The way you want to boil rice is one part of rice to two parts of water. And... Make sure you clean it a few times. I did sieve mine and cleaned it about three times to get rid of that excess starch. Put the heat on low and cover it up so it can steam. I don't have an actual lid, so I'm just using a pan. So here we have a delicious Thai green curry. Make sure you have it with some fresh lemon, some fresh coriander, some chilli if you like, and plenty of egg. So, yep, I didn't forget about the egg. It's right here. And if you enjoy the content, please do leave a like, subscribe, click that notification bell and I'll hopefully be uploading really regularly, so thanks for watching.